In this video, I'm going to do a walkthrough of BigML. BigML, you can go there at BigML.com, that's the URL. So those who have seen my videos, I do a lot of videos on statistics and machine learning using the R programming language, using the Python programming language. This is the first time I do one on BigML. I was introduced recently to this tool. Uh, what's cool about it is you don't need any programming. It's a visual tool. You can do some serious modeling just by importing data and pushing buttons. Uh, and it's cloud-based, so there's nothing you have to install on your local machine. So go ahead at BigML.com. Uh, you can sign up for a free account. That's what I have as a free account here as well. So once you're signed in and you're logged in, uh, click Open Dashboard. And it's going to take you to uh, kind of the, the, you know, the workspace for you to, to model your data. And it uses the, the uh, kind of a pipeline um, uh, model where you you start with a source, your data set, then your model, and finally you get to you know predicting on the model you created. Uh, there are also built-in data sets for you for your convenience, so you can learn. And we're exactly we're going to look at two types of model: a classification model and a linear regression model. And we're going to be we'll start by using the Titanic, the built-in Titanic uh, survival data set. So simply click on it, and it's going to open it up. In um, the, um, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to open the data set so you can look at the features. You see there are five features, age, class, fair, where they joined, and whether or not they survived. So if those that are not familiar with the Titanic survival data set, it's a classic used a lot in statistic classes. It's the, the manifest, the passenger manifest of those that were on the Titanic shipwreck. There's a clear pattern to those who survived. Uh, if you were a female and first class, you had a high probability of surviving. If you were a male in third class, you had a very low probability of surviving. So that's what's interesting about this data set because people can relate to, to the Titanic and the, the patterns are fairly clear. So um, in Big ML, all you have to do is put what you're trying to predict, your outcome, as a last feature, the last column in the data set, and it's automatically going to know that you're trying to work, you're trying to predict this this field. And um, uh, it, as you can see, it's a true-false field, so it's going to apply automatically apply infer to apply a classification model. So once you're happy with this, there is a configure data set button, and you simply say, "Yep, create data set." That's the data set, data set we want to we want to work with. So it's going from source to data set, and now it opens it in a data set tab. Right, we're moving up uh, these tabs, and it's going to show you the same thing, the same five features, except now. It's uh, cleaned up things for us. It knows that age is a numerical val value. There are 2,199 uh, ages, and there are nine missing. It's automatically going to impute the missings for us, the missing values for us, which is cool. And it also shows you a distribution of the ages. And you can see the bulk of the passengers were between, were between 20 and 30 years old. There's also this little handy button here that gives you the five number summary, where it gives you the minimum age, um, the maximum age, and you know the mean and the median. What's interesting about this is that you can see the minimum age shouldn't be smaller than zero. Nobody is younger than zero, and the maximum age is 74, which is is, is a good maximum. We would not want to see somebody who's 300 years old, right? Those are outliers. You have to go in and clean them, but everything is fine here. The class uh, it shows it as a categorical data, so it it, it automatically uh, figured out that it was not text; it was categorical. And as you can see, there are only a handful of categories, first, a second, a third, and a few more, right? And it, and it breaks them down for you. Um, the fair, uh, a lot of them are missing, and you also see you know, a few examples of the fares. Where they joined, that's the port, and it's also considered a categorical data. That's what you, that's what you want to see. Finally, survived is our outcome. That's good. There's nothing missing. You wouldn't want to be predicting on, 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 whether the, on a value where the, the, you know, the outcome is, is missing unless it's your real live data set, right? But if you're learning, you need to have the outcomes. And it shows you that what's interesting here, that 14 by 15,000 instances did not survive the Titanic journey, while seven, 700 did. So about two-thirds didn't, one-third did. Okay, so once you're happy with the data set, it's clear, it's clean, it's the way you want it. There is this little cloud button and simply click on the first one. We're not going to go into depth into the other options. We're simply going to do one click model. And that's what exactly what it's doing. It's actually running a model. And there it figured the model for us. And it returns a decision tree, basically looking at all your variables and deciding um, uh, it basically look at your data set, look at and tr try to find patterns in a data set 
whether or not it could predict if somebody was going to survive the trip or not. So these are all if-then statements. Each tree represents another kind of pattern it has discovered. So let's take an easy one here, this one here. You click on it and it breaks it out. It just it kind of isolates it. And if you click, uh, well, let's, let's walk through it. It may be more interesting. So the first one, the first, oops, I didn't want to do that. There. The first is the class department. We're going to follow the thick line. Uh, it says those that were uh, not in first class, not deck class, but were second class. And if they were under 13.47 years of age, they survived with a, an 86.68% confidence. So the pattern, this pattern, the model is 86.68% confident that it's a good pattern. And, um, and it's found 25 instances um, where, um, you know, people fell in this category and did survive. So not bad. Um, you can click the reset button, it will bring back all the uh, other trees, and every tree is in of itself a story, right? Okay, so let's look at another branch. So you can have, you can zoom in a little bit here, right? We'll say true, we want to see those who survived, and we don't want to see anything with a low confidence. We want, you know, something above 50. So then, for example, we could go um, here, for example, right? Those that were first class, uh, paid less than 4,665 and that were younger than 28, right? If there's two ages, you can, you know, the, the second one cancels out the first one. And younger than 28 would survive with a 58.97% confidence. The model, the model is 58.97% confident that they would survive. So all of these are a story, a pattern uh, that the model learned to help us predict something. In this case, whether or not the passenger survived the voyage on the Titanic. There's another view that's interesting as well. It's a sunburst. It's kind of a cool graphic, and kind of same thing. It's, this is the, the first, you know, the first leaf on on our branch, and it keeps going down, right? So I think the light greens mean they 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 outcome positive, uh, the red one um, outcome negative, the dark ones outcome negative, um, and um, hold on. Yes, I think the, the, the green ones mean that the confidence is higher. The darker color, the confidence isn't as high. Uh, so many different ways of looking at your data. You can save your model, right? You can um, uh, download. You can also download the act actionable model so you can keep all these uh, decision trees. Another, th another thing that's interesting is the model summary report. So this will tell you which are the most important variables for the model. Unfortunately, there are very few uh, features in this data set, but clearly, class is the most important and that's true right those who came in first class had a high probability of surviving so those in third in third class didn't so it shows you kind of you know the variable importance and clearly class and age are the most important uh, to, to this model um, you can again the cloud with a thunderbolt in it do um, a try predict button and that's pretty cool right because it, it allows you to to interact with your model. So you say, what if my passenger came in second class, paid, you know, under 10,000 pounds, joined in Sherbor, and was, uh, you know, young, 15. Let's see, um, a, a, unfortunately, this passenger that I just, that I just, you know, created through this profile has, uh, was not gonna survive. The model is 64.57% uh, confident that they would not survive. So what if they were in first class? We're just going to change one. And now it's 60% confident that, that that passenger is going to survive, right? Just by one class. How about third class? I'm going to say it's going to say false, yes. So how about third class, but uh, in the 30s? Oh, let's see. Here, 31 years old, third class, did survive. So one thing I want to I want to mention here is if we go back to the models, let's go back to the normal view. A word about you know overfitting. The longer your tree is, the harder it is going to is going to be to find that exact um, set of conditions in the real world, right? So you're better off with smaller trees, shorter trees, uh, and definitely with a higher confidence uh, to find. So quite a cool tool. There is one thing we can do, 
and that is to uh, bring um, a training and a testing data set. So oftentimes when you're modeling things, you're going to use a training data set to learn and you're going to apply a testing data set or a validation data set or real life data to get predictions. So let me set that up and we're going to import them. Okay, so now I, I took the, uh, the Titanic data set that we had and I split it in two because I want to learn on a portion of the data and I want to test how the model does. So I'm going to import the files I have. You simply drag and drop them on in your sources tab. So my training and a test. So I have now a Titanic data set that's, that's testing, a Titanic data set that's training. So like we did before, I can click on it, but we don't really need to do that. I can just go uh, a shortcut is just go one click data set. Like I don't have to click on it and it's automatically going to uh, open it up in the data set tab. And you'll see, you notice know, it's exactly the same thing as we had as the, you know, the original uh, data set, except there are just fewer of them. So I'm going to now model this. And once we have the model, I'm going to go batch prediction on the model. And it's going to tell you what do you want to train? So we want to use our Titanic underscore train data set model. That's correct. And we want to predict on the Titanic uh, test. Oh, I forgot to do one thing. So you see it's not showing up here. So I need to go back and I need to make a data set out of this one as well. So you need to make a data set out of both your training and your testing. They both need to be available. So we're going to do it again, right? But I don't want to work on that one. I want to model my training. So let me, let me model it again. Let's go back to one click model. And go back to your action cloud and go batch prediction. And Titanic. Now here it is our test data set. That's what we want to see. Okay. All right. So we're good. And at the end you have predict button. So hit the predict button. And we're basically going to take the, the training set where it learned and apply that model and give us predictions on our new data set of which it did not learn. And let's see how it does, right? So the first one it did well, the originally original outcome is survived and what the model applied is uh, survive. So original survive is the original. What the model guessed or predicted is the second, is the last one. So true, true, good, true, true, good. False, true, not so good. False, true, not so good. False, false, good. True, false, etc. So here you can see how how well your model did, right? But more importantly, you can download it and use it uh, for your own needs, right? We that we that we just we we applied a modeling on a testing data set. And you can now save it. You can now download it as a CSV and use those for whatever you need to do. Okay, so that's what I want to show you. That's, that was it. That's, it. that's all I wanted to show you about the, uh, the classification model. So now there's one more thing we can do. I just want to quickly show you a linear regression model. So I'm going to show you now how to use, uh, apply a linear regression model. So it's exactly the same concept as with the, the Titanic data set except um, it's we're predicting a, a continuous number, not a true false, right? So go to gallery, public galleries, where people, you know, show models or data sets that they've done. Um, click on models. And in categories, click higher education. It seems to show it in different orders every time. So find one that's called, um, professor's salaries model. So, and you can click on it and you can purchase it for free, right? It's purchased, but because it's free, um, you know, you can get it. So click the purchase button. I already have it. Uh, and then go to, now that we have it, right? It's, it's loaded. Go to um, uh, view public data set. And this shows you the professor salaries data set, which I think is a, a, a data set from Texas A&M that shows um, the, the types of, uh, that shows the salaries of various professors, right? So they range between, 
63 and they go all the way up to $200,000 a year. And some of the information there is sex, years of service, years since PhD, discipline, and rank, right? The rank of the professor. So that shows that we're gonna use we're gonna we're gonna use all these features to see if we can find patterns in the amount of salary uh, a professor gets or, or you know an employee teaching gets. And because the last variable here, as you can see, is not true false, but instead is a continuous variable, right? You can see it here. Uh, it's going to give us a salary as a prediction as well. So very exactly like we did before, right? Now we have it here. We see the data set. We can, um, where, where, where is the, I think you click on purchase maybe. There. Salary exit, everything we want to see. Click on one click model, just like we did with the Titanic. And here it is, right? So let's let's simplify this a little bit. Let's choose um, expected error. So you don't have a confidence interval here. Um, instead, the error is the expected error. So how off is the salary, right? So let's say we don't want salaries that are very off. We want where the error is really small. So only a very small amount of dollars. It's only off a very small amount of dollars. So let's take, let's pick a tree. Let's pick this one here. So we'll pick this guy here. So as you can see, somebody who's not a professor, whose discipline is theoretical, whose rank is not associated prof uh, uh, associate prof professor. Um, we'll see. Well, there's only one instance. That's not very convincing. Three instances, eight instances. Well, we're gonna go with this one here. Something where they they found seven um, seven instances. So somebody who's not a professor, a theoretical, a associate professor, less than five years of service, two years since they got their PhD, over two years, over three years, um, and under five years. So these this this one gets canceled out. So it, in the end, it's between those who are who have gotten their PhD between three and five years, uh, higher bigger than three years, or smaller and equal to five years their salary would be $73,000 and with the error of $7,900. So, sorry, the salary is $75,000 with an error of $8,000. So plus or minus $8,000 error. And there you have it, right? This is a regression model and it's predicting salary. Same thing as we did before. You can um, do uh, the summary report. It'll tell you rank is the most important variable followed by these other variables. So uh, there you have it, right? Two models, a classification model on the Titanic data set and a uh, regression model on the, 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 these profess, professor salaries using the big ML tool. It has a lot to offer, great visual dashboards that quickly tell you what's important and what's not important. Now, the drawbacks I've seen here is you, because it's a free account, I don't think you can uh, upload really big data sets. And it may be a little hard to do complicated things. Let's say you want to, uh, you know, break down a certain feature into different custom categories. It may be hard. It's not impossible because it does, uh, you can, you know, tie it up with code, uh, but it's a little bit harder. But if you have clean data set and you quickly want to experiment th with things, BigML does a great job.